We want to present to you our company and what we do, how we uh, put blockchain and AI together. So my name is Alex Yanku. I am the uh, ecosystem manager. I take care of the marketing aspect of the company. And this is my friend and colleague, uh, Florin Otto, our uh, CPO, our chief product officer. So we want to take this discussion to talk you through what we do. We'll take it easy. Uh, it will be a laid back discussion. And then at the end, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We'll have the networking, more, about, more of the networking afterwards. So we'll get a chance to interact with each other, no problem. And also we'll continue the party afterwards, what everybody Obviously. wants. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so to start off, I think a good, uh, a good starting point would be to let everybody know how blockchain and AI actually fit together and what it was that got us on this path and got us going to <coughs> decide to mix those two uh, technologies into one, uh, one company. Yeah, it's interesting. So when, when we started back in 2019, actually we, we didn't start with, uh, with blockchain in mind, even though uh, I had a background in, in building blockchain products by, by that time starting in early 2017. Uh, so we didn't start with blockchain in mind, we just started building this, this ecosystem for AIs and as we continue building it, we were like, yeah, but this ecosystem to some extent needs to uh, feel and, and, and work permissionless because the AI, the AI researcher shouldn't trust us. And from this problem of trust, uh, it, it, it got us thinking, okay, so how do we solve this trust problem? Because there are, we want to onboard the next one million of AIs into humans. But how are we going to, to solve the trust issues? Because we are a startup, we are just getting started. We, nobody, nobody trusts us because, <laughs> again, we are a startup. So we want to build a system in such a way that is trustless. So they are compelled to come here, even they, if they raise, I don't know, 10 million in funding and they invested all in, in those algorithms. If the system is built in such a way that uh, nobody else has access to the algorithms, not even us, um, would be a success. So because of that, we, we, we stumbled and we need blockchain in order to give the AI researcher full ownership and full control over the AIs that uh, they are creating. So because of that, I think blockchain is the perfect medium for AI to evolve because um, it eliminates the friction of having permission, of uh, being paid. So if we look now at the, at the algorithm DALI, which you guys know uh, it's, it's, very, it's very popular now and is, is dropping an entire industry, the, the art industry. Um, imagine there are multiple, I don't know, tens if not hundreds of DALI copies by different independent AI researchers, but they don't have a voice. They can't sell these algorithms, they can't make money on them because they don't have an ecosystem to bring these algorithms one-stop shop and to have a global audience. So, so this is what our ecosystem does and that's why we need blockchain because they don't trust us and they shouldn't. Uh, but but the, the blockchain solution is permissionless. So I think, just to conclude, the, the blockchain helps the AI to, to evolve because it gives the, the North Star, the AI researcher, it, it gives control. Okay, lovely. Now, you told us about how those two fit together. Um, I think it, it would be a good time now to start talking about what it is that we actually do, what <coughs> services we provide, what products we provide, what, how we, we mix those two industries together and what comes out of it, what is the end product. Because I think that this could be one of the most interesting things that uh, the people that have come together tonight can, uh, can talk about, can, can witness us talk about. Yeah, so first and foremost, of course, we are building a blockchain from, uh, from scratch in terms of the interaction and, and, and deploying AIs on the chain. We are starting with the Cosmos SDK boilerplate, and uh, we are very, very fortunate to have an ecosystem which is fully running, the Cosmos ecosystem, uh, fully interoperability uh, deployed uh, one year and a half ago. So I think in terms of the tech choice, I think we are in the right hands. So we are now building the, the blockchain, soon we'll be in our testnet phase, uh, early next year, um, end of Q1, early Q2, depending on how the testnet goes, we'll, we'll have our mainnet. And already in our, in our testnet, we plan to bring the, the interactions that I already hinted at. So we already plan to, to have the AI researcher have the possibility to bring an AI algorithm and mint it on chain uh, as an NFT. 
And then you have the data providers, which is us, the users, the consumers, or the businesses, which will leverage these AIs by providing data and, and essentially creating AI NFTs, which will become like factories that can uh, receive a request. Let's assume, in, in your case, the, the AI factory is a clone of your voice. It receives a request in text, and it generates audio with your voice. This is a simple thing that you'll be able to do in the human's ecosystem. For sure, you'll be able to clone your face, and you'll be able to do much more than that. This is just a small example. We already started, actually, cloning, as you say, people. Yeah. Uh, we have some clients that we, we actually did this uh, very clone that you're talking about right now. All it takes is uh, 20 to 30 minutes of footage. Uh, where you will uh, be giving your voice and your face, obviously, uh, which in the end results in this on our platform where you could actually type in some text and this will, uh, this will get the end result of yourself actually talking with your voice uh, and in multiple languages. That's, for me, that is the beauty of it. The fact that you're no longer limited to the languages that you actually know, you can now uh, expands beyond human horizons pretty much. You can scale yourself. You can actually achieve a new, how should we call it, a new I think, I think, yeah, I think what's relevant for us, but it's very hard for people to grasp because it's, it's very, very, very early stage to, for people to understand, oh, so now I can have access to AI. What does that mean? Okay, in the beginning, it means that you could, uh, let's say, as you said, clone yourself. Next, it means that maybe you'll have access to some AIs which will uh, help you better manage your business. Um, one, of, one of the AI researchers, which will become an ambassador for us because he's very excited about what we're building, Gianluca, mm -hmm. um, he has AIs which generates data which is um, also synthetic, but uh, it's uh, uh, the, with privacy in mind. So there are all this host of AIs which you'll be able to access um, but I think the best example is DALI. Right now, if you guys are excited about DALI and you, you have a business and you don't want to go to Shutterstock, you want to have a, a, a creative image based on a prompt, you actually cannot use DALI. You cannot mail OpenAI, guys, please, I need DALI because I have this client, you know, they want to buy this bouquet of flowers and I need to put this offer for them. And no, you cannot access this. It's as simple as that. So imagine having access to DALI, permissionless, and at a, a, at a fraction of the cost that it will take you hire an artist. So I think that's what's exciting. And when that will happen, people will understand, ah, so this is why we should care about having access to this AI, because this is what we can do. It opens an entire host of possibilities. And one example you mentioned is uh, my co-founder, Sabine, he cloned his voice in multiple languages, in, in Portuguese and Japanese, and his Romanian, actually, his Romanian neural network trained the Japanese neural network and the Portuguese neural network to speak in Japanese and Portuguese with his toned voice and with his, in his, uh, with, with his tones. And that's, without, that's him, a, without him knowing without those him languages. Without him knowing and without him doing anything, right? So I think that's, that's fascinating. And also we have Diana, our, our colleague, which lives in synthetic form and I think earned a pretty good uh, income just by uh, being an avatar for different clients in different synthetic uh, media that was created. Can you actually, because you opened up this, uh, this topic, can you briefly touch upon Diana and the exciting things that come with it? <clears throat> yeah, so essentially <laughs> it's, it's very, very simple. Imagine that in terms of video production will be completely disrupted when it comes to content. So whatever... Uh, can, whatever can be a video will be a video, and 80-90% of these videos will be synthetic. It will be generated by neural networks the same way Dali generates art from a prompt. So I think it's exciting because we can forget about the whole creative uh, uh, and uh, also most of actually the, the production process, which is, which is so heavy, if you want to change a word or if you want to customize it to a specific client or whatever. So as a company, you no longer have to buy a studio, uh, equipment. No, nothing. These cameras right here and stuff like that because yeah. you can al already in the future, it. In the future, we could, have, we could have our AIs talk with each other, the host with our avatars, and we'll be, uh, I don't know, and from somewhere a, chilling. From a personal standpoint, if you're an actor, if you're a model, uh, you could actually scale yourself and use your digital avatar to sell it to brands. For example, let's say Coca-Cola wants to make a new ad with 
Otto's face here. Mm -hmm. And he has his digital avatar. Not in my face, I think, because he's not <laughs> crying for that. But, but let's, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's carry on with this with example. With Diana's though. face. With Diana's face, but they don't know Diana. Let's have your face for okay. it. Okay. Uh, they, uh, they want to create an ad with you. You no longer need to go there. They simply input the text, mm -hmm. and then that's, yeah, that's the end. That's what's exciting. Guys, it's permissionless. So you don't need, you don't need uh, uh, permission from anybody as long as you respect the rules. Because uh, when you are using a decentralized environment, if you have only one Bitcoin, you should send only, you should send only one Bitcoin. So the same, the same behavior works on the chain in any ecosystem that you enter on the blockchain. So in, in ours as well. So. That's the beauty of it, because you don't need to trust anybody. You, as a, uh, let's say, data provider, which you create your avatar, let's say you set up the rules, how your avatar should be used, and then it's up the job for the human validators and for the network to make sure that your rules are enforced and, and, your, and, and your AI NFTs are, are used and are maximized by that. You can say, I only want business videos for this category. One thing I'd like to add to what you're saying right now is, talking about our proof of human technology, because this is something that, uh, at least in my experience, a lot of time when you speak about AI, and uh, wh when you start presenting the whole idea of artificial intelligence and using artifi uh, artificial intelligence, people often talk about the late 90s, early 2000s movies, uh, when AI was taking over, and it was out of control, and it was outsmarting people. Well. What we have in place in order to keep the AI in check, pretty much, is uh, this technology that we call proof of human, which ensures that there is an AI, be uh, a human behind mm -hmm. every AI decision. That is something as simple as, for example, with an Apple Watch, it could take your pulse to prove that you're there. With your phone, you look into the camera, you do a couple of facial gestures to just prove that it's a, uh, it's a human actor behind it. There is humanity behind it, and that uh, the AI doesn't take these decisions by itself. That will also be employed every time your own AI is used. So like if a digital avatar that you created is being used, you will need to be uh, accessing this sort of technology, the proof of human technology, to prove that you are actually uh, agreeing with the use mm -hmm. uh, that is being proposed. Mm -hmm. And obviously, through it, you will get the monetary value and the, um, all the credits that are due as a normal actor would. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, uh, that's the other <coughs> reason why we went into blockchain. Because <clears throat> um, if you guys can, I don't know, play an, an imagination game and try to think that everything is possible to, to do through AI, suddenly we have bestowed upon us the responsibility of what we need to create. And uh, that question essentially boils down, if I have my avatar, right, and lives on the blockchain, what should be created with it, right? Uh, and that's, that's upon me to decide. But there, are, there will be multiple or a host of AIs which will be upon the community maybe to decide what should be created with that. Like when we ask, what should be created with DALI? OpenAI knows that, right? But we, we don't want that for, for the future. We don't want gatekeepers. We want to move away from them. So that's why the proof of human technology is exciting. Uh, the voice of communities that, that we are doing, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this project because it can bring new people into, into crypto and in, into Web3. So um, essentially, we are um, a bit of background. We are doing these projects. We are calling them projects, initiatives, in order to showcase the world what can you do on top of our infrastructure, what can you do in the humans ecosystem. So we build and deploy several, um, several projects. And the, the one that I'm most excited about is, is called Voice Of. It's the voice of the community. So essentially, we are doing a pilot uh, with the biggest football club uh, in Romania, which is assisted by, uh, by Binance. Essentially, Binance is coming in with Binance Academy in order to teach the, the football club's um, fans about Web3. And I think this is very, very exciting. Um, and through humans, the, the biggest football club, one of the biggest football clubs in Romania, will be able to capture like five to ten sentences of one um, fan's voice taken from um, um, like, all of know, the fans. Of all, all the fans. 
and create one single voice. The AI will synthesize all these voices to create one single voice, which is the voice of the community. Um, the exciting thing is that this will involve your community and unite your community. That voice can be in any language and will have the same tone of voice. And the same way my, my co-founder and our, our CEO, Sabine, who trained his voice in multiple languages, the same voice of community in, one, in the base language will train all the other ones. And I'm excited by this because it will be the first time where, in this case, the football fans and other companies in the gaming industry as well, they, when maybe they will interact with Web3. And I think this kind of project and initiatives are exciting because we need more people to adopt Web3 to understand why decentralization is, is needed, actually. It's not because it's beautiful or because we like it. It's needed. Uh, and what um, a permissionless ecosystem can enable us to achieve, which before wasn't, wasn't possible. And with that note, I would like to thank you, my colleague Alex, for, for helping me hold this panel.